Hey there, Elijah Day Paris from Private Labs, here to walk you through the latest version of our library, Scream 2. Rather, our latest library, Scream 2. So Scream 2, as the name suggests, is the follow-up to Scream 1. Scream 1 was a very popular experimental library in which we recorded uh, various atonal orchestral effects and you know packaged them together into a library. So um, Scream 2 kind of picks up where Scream 1 lo left off, focusing on low-end articulations. This time we've got a low-end string ensemble of six cellos and four basses. Uh, just like Scream 1 was recorded in the Georgian Film Studio, huge film scoring stage in Tbilisi, Georgia, and we used a combination of a Soviet vintage and Neumann mics. Um, I'm going to walk you through the interface before going through the content. So over here we have the mic mixer. Deca, mid, spot one, spot two, and vintage. And above here, um, we added the feature of being able to load and unload the mics from memory. So as you notice, the memory burden changes with the loading and unloading of patches, of mic patches. So that's really great. Um, we've got the sample offset, which is by default linked to the mod wheel. Convolution, which I have set off so we can hear the room in its natural state. And then we have the envelope here. Um, one thing that you can't see is that we have um, the tempo sync connected to the pitch bin wheel. So instead of just doing a um, you know a static tempo sync, what we did was we gave you the ability to actually sync and change the speed of patches just using the pitch bin wheel. So I'm going to kind of jump in here and start playing through some things so you can get an idea of how things sound. First up, we have aggressive glisses down. And let me show you how the pitch bin works. So with the pitch bin all the way up, that's the maximum speed setting, right? And then with the pitch bin wheel down, it just stretches the hell out of the sample. So you can do anything in between. And one thing to notice too is that Everything is velocity sensitive. So we have up to three velocity layers, pianissimo, mezzo forte, and fortissimo. And the way those are triggered are just by the velocity of your MIDI information. So if you want to trigger the higher velocities, you can just edit your MIDI. Um, so oh, let me give you a, a taste of the mic position. So here's just the DECA. Here's the mid. Here's spot, spot one rather, spot two, and vintage, the vintage uh, Neumann UM57 tubes. Moving on, so now we've got the same thing but Sul Pont. Which is kind of a raw or more aggressive sound. It's 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 more difficult to control a lot of these articulations sul pont, which is kind of the reason why we captured many of them sul pont because we wanted to really capture that raw aggression and kind of uncontrolled sound. Um, next, we have aggressive gliss. Excuse me, aggressive gliss is up. And the same thing sul ponts. Moving on, uh, these are aggressive trims up and down. And now moving on to a total one shots. These are some of my favorites. Uh, these were a favorite in Scream 1, and the idea was to get the players to play um, kind of an not just atonal, but a non-pitched sound in the low range of their instrument, almost kind of like a muted sound. Um, and we felt like we didn't capture that enough of the low end in Scream 1, which is, which is part of the reason we did Scream 2 in the first place, but this came out really nicely. Um, just give it a listen. <laughs> And again, with the sample offset, you can dial in the tightness. Mm -hmm. 
Now we've captured these also as um, with the soul ponds. Very, very raw, aggressive sound there. Let me dial in some of the uh, offset. And same thing, but with a tremolo bowing. Atonal trems. Again, multiple dynamics, right? So you get the slow PDCMO one, the lower velocity. And you trigger the fortissimo with the higher velocity. Moving on to some clusters. So these are clusters down high. These are in the higher register. A. And now we have variation B. Clusters down low, so uh, these are going to be in the lower uh, range of the instrument. Now cluster gliss is going up. Let's dial in some offset. Cluster trims. Cluster trims down. So what we did was we had the players, um, you know, play a cluster tremolo uh, with a tremolo bowing going down on their instrument. Here's variation B. And opposite direction, cluster trims up. Oh, now we're moving on to some of my very favorite articulations. These are verbato clusters. So we have three different versions of these. The idea was to have the players do a very, very wide vibrato in the low range of their instrument. And um, we, we, we've captured this three different ways. So I'll just, I'll just play them and let them speak for themselves. So here we go. Here's version A. Let me just dial that convolution back. Here we go. version B. And version C. Again, velocity sensitive, so you can hear pianissimo and fortissimo. Excellent. 
so we've still got quite a few patches to cover. Um, here are Glissando Falls. Let me turn that offset off, convolution off. <laughs> Okay, great candidate for the uh, speed control. And going the other way, just to slow it down. And you can hear at the end, I just sped it up. So. Now we've got the same falls, but slow ponds. Offset also gives you the ability to shorten these, so in conjunction with the speed control, that you pretty much get these to sound like whatever you want them to. So here's with sample offset and no speed control. And here's with the sample offset and speed control all the way up. Great. Uh, next, we have our Glissando Falls trim. So same deal, but with the tremolo bowing. Again, we've captured these at multiple dynamics. I'm not always demonstrating every dynamic because that would take forever. I'm trying to keep this walkthrough to about 15 minutes or under 20 if I can. But we have, in fact, captured multiple dynamics for everything or, or nearly everything. Offset. Offset and speed control. If you come back off that offset to lengthen the sample, we'll keep our, uh, our uh, pitch pinned up. And then you could dial that even further with attack and release controls, but I'm, I'm not going to get into that. I'll let you guys kind of experiment with that on your own. Um, next up, we have Glissando Harmonics, which was something that was widely requested by users of Scream 1, and so we, we uh, put it in here. Uh, let me back off that convolution. I want you to hear the natural sound of the room as much as possible. So we have these going up and down, obviously. So another great com candidate for offset and speed control, right? Now we have Glissando Short Rip. I've got some offset dialed in there to, to add some aggression, but I'll try to turn that off in a second so you can hear it naturally. Let me back off that convolution. So obviously that doesn't sound like much of a glissando, that's because I've dug into the sample itself, but when I back off the offset. So that's kind of the, one of the cool things about the library is that using the offset and the uh, pitch bend for the, uh, the speed and, and um, even the attack and release, you can really get more mileage out of these libraries. And that, that was something that people liked a lot from the original screen, so we kept the same um, model here. So now we have, we're going into our harmonics. These are harmonic glissandos. So on the left, they're going down. Oops. Into the right. Going up. So again, user requested feature. I gave uh, Scream 1 users the opportunity to request patches in Scream 2, and that was one they all wanted was, you know, harmonic glissandos. I've also given some harmonic falls. Dial in some offset and some speed. Backing off the speed control. No speed control. 
Uh, now we have our harmonic falls trem, so same deal, but with tremolo. Oops. Okay, next up we have our random gliss up shorts. Uh, let me back off that convolution. I want you to hear the room. Whoops. Here's some sample offset. So these were played, you know, random glisses up, up short. So um, very aggressive and kind of almost un uncontrolled sound, which is... What I like about it, it's very visceral. Uh, next up, we've got the same deal, but Soul Ponce. So this will be even more raw. Very glassy sound. Next up, we've got our, excuse me, let's get rid of this. Uh, rips down, subdued. Convolution there. I'll give you another taste of the mics here. So here's just the deca. One sec. Here's just the mid. Spot one. Spot two. And our vintage. Moving on, uh, so now we've got the same deal, but uh, rips down Soul Pont. You can kind of notice a trend here. We, we really wanted to capture all of these articulations with as much variation as possible. So we did them um, normal, we did them Soul Pont, we did them Trem, Trem Soul Pont. They're not always named that way, but you'll hear them in the actual patches themselves that we have all those different uh, Boeings represented there. Um, now we have random trills up, short. So these are in the higher, um, obviously the higher range of the instrument, which for cellos and basses sounds very, very intense. What does that sound like without the convolution of Lajade? I don't know. Let's try, try it. Great. And same deal, but uh, Soul Pont. Different mic mix there. Let's, let's hear these from just the mids, just for fun. Maybe a good candidate for some sample offset. Speed control all the way up. That's probably too much. So let's back that off. Going the other way, speed control all the way down. That's too much of a stretch, but you could do that if you wanted to. Just having some fun here. Um, next, we have our random trills down Soul Pont. So same thing, going the other direction. Next up, we have some risers for you. Those are ever useful. So risers A. Risers are a perfect candidate for speed control. So that's the speed control all the way up. And with some sample offset, you can dial that in even more and make that even shorter. Sample offset all the way up. You get the idea. Risers B. So these are trim, tremolo riser. Well, so I'll play it first without the offset. 
fairly long ones. So that last one was with the speed control all the way up. And we can shorten it even further by um, dialing in the sample offset. Now we have the sample offset all the way up. Um, next set of risers are risers, excuse me, risers, soul pont. Quite long, so maybe you want some sample offset there. And some speed control. So in that last one, I actually started with the speed control down and gradually brought it up. So that's one cool thing that you can do, especially with risers. And their last set of risers are our risers trim. So here we go. Oh, whoops, let me back off that offset. Here's with some offset and speed control. You've got the idea, but now you guys are pros of this. Um, now we want to go to some scratch falls. So the idea with all the scratch articulations was to have the players exert a lot of pressure on with the right hand of the bow and kind of more or less mute with the left hand so that they're not actually producing an actual tone. Um, so here are, we, and we did lots of variations with, with of these. The atonal one shots are, are more or less what we call a scratch. Um, but now we have them doing some uh, scratch falls. So here we go. Bring up the interface. And these ones are a little longer. So of course you can dial in some offset back off the convolution, probably. And we have some scratch glisses going down. Which, with the offset, you can actually take the gliss out. It just becomes another low end, kind of like another variation of the ill tonal one shots, which I played for you earlier on. Um, next up, we have scratch glisses. Some little bit of sample offset there. Turn this offset off. Scratch rips, soupant. And we've got what we call silent glisses. This is what we get when we have the players play very lightly, almost like harmonics. And let me bring up the interface for that so we can hear some options. Yeah, back off the convolution there. Yeah, so the idea with these were, was to have the players play with the left hand um, kind of very quietly, very softly and just bow going in different directions. It's it's more or less a harmonic effect, but we without the intention of actually creating a harmonic, so. And then we've got the same thing, but some textures, which are loops, I believe. Yeah. You get the idea. Oh, well, I had the offset off. I actually don't think the offset works on the looped patches, so that's not a big deal. Um, now we move to the last bit of our library. So we have some skips, A, B, C, and Soul Pont. So the skips essentially are just a jeté bowing where, where the players are throwing the bow um, at the strings and allowing it to bounce. And it will make more. If you don't know what a jeté bowing is, you'll, you'll hear it now. So 
We had them do that while playing random pitches. So that's why we have three different variations of these. So offset is off, let's back off the convolution. That's variation A. Here is variation B. Maybe you want to dig in with some sample offset. Get the slap of the bow hitting the string. And uh, then we have variation C, obviously. Let's uh, just for fun, here's some different mic perspectives. So just the DECA. Just the mids. Spot one. Spot two. And vintage. And last but not least, we have our skips soul pont. So same deal, jete boing, um, random notes, and let me back off the offset. So that concludes the walkthrough for Scream 2. We have 48 patches, many more articulations, which we've kind of bundled into patches to kind of uh, save space. And for the sake of organization, we have over 4,000 samples, almost two gigabytes uncompressed, more than four gigabytes. I'm sorry, four, four gigabytes plus uncompressed and just under two gigabytes compressed. Um, Scream 2 is available for the pre-sale price of $99 until release, which will be honestly in the next couple of days. So definitely grab it if you like it. If you are a composer of you know, film and games, doing things on the creepier, more visceral side of things, doing horror games and action and suspense and things like that. If you're a trailer composer, Scream 2 is an excellent tool. Uh, a lot of trailer composers are using Scream 1. Um, again, thank you for your time watching uh, the walkthrough and all of the supporters of Scream 1 who have kind of encouraged me to continue with these libraries. And um, I am planning a uh, follow-up to this as well, but let's just see how this does first, and I'll, I'll uh, speak about that at the appropriate time. So thank you so much. Hit me up on VI Control or via our Facebook page, Fiverr Lavis Audio, for any questions you may have. Bye.